So traders, I want to give you a bit of a market update today. We're going to be just going across all the markets to show you what's happening right now. We're looking at the S&P 500, the stock market. Be looking at the metals and the miners well too. Possibly look at also Bitcoin. Look at the interest rates. Also want to touch on the inflation and let's, that's, or oh, actually probably, probably got some more in there. So let's get straight into it. Don't place a trade based on what you'll see in this video because there is no guarantees of making a profit in the market. It takes you a long time to become a good trader. So this video here is just to educate you to become a much better trader. Alrighty traders, so let's get straight into today's video. Traders, I'm giving away, I'm giving, I'm, I'm, I'm giving away free access to my trading course, my five phase complete breakthrough trading course. If you need help, get your ass over there right now. Put your email address in and uh and make sure you get access to that to that free trading course because i promise you you're going to love it the very uh, the, in fact the very first video that i've actually just recently recorded in the last week walks you through my recent trades i've taken um i also talked to you about my trading system and a whole bunch of other stuff as well too that's really going to help you so that's the very first video you're going to get as soon as you put your email address in so if you actually want to see the trades that i've been taking in the last week or so then go over there right now put your email address in and i promise you um uh, or then you're going to get that, that, that bonus welcome video and then also the free trading course as well too. So let's have a look at the quick, let's have a quick look at the stock market. So the stock market is, um, is, uh, is pretty much, pretty much a nothing day right now, but we're still in this overall downward trend, pretty much a doji day today, but you can see I've got a bit of a channel here in place. Uh, as you as you can see, there's a, lot, there's a lot of red between the miners and the metals and also the stock market. So lots of red today. Not much of a good day across the markets. And if you have a look at, let me just show you this here, because I think this is, I think this is quite, um, quite um, important to, uh, to, to see, because I think this is really going to, to show you um, a really good sort of uh, understanding of what's going on in this markets today. So if we have a look at this here, you can see here that it's pretty much a mixed bag across the markets today. Um, we actually had Microsoft up a little bit today. Apple up a little bit today. We had Amazon up a little bit today. Actually, is that true? Let me just have a look at that. Let me just double check that. Um, Amazon, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's all up to date, just double checking. So it's a bit of a mixed bag through here, as you can see. Um, but we can see the energy sector is definitely getting hit quite hard. Now, why am I bringing this up towards, why am I mentioning this to you? I've been saying now that, I've been saying now for the last month or so, that this inflationary spike that we've been getting is going to reverse soon, right? Because when it seems so good, when something seems so good, or in this case, it actually is bad, right? Inflationary spiking, it's so bad. If you think about the inflation, if you think about the inflation spike that we've been getting, it's so it's so bad, right? But it's also so good. But if you think about that, as if, if that was actually a stock and you're buying it, that looks so good, right? Oh my goodness, it's going, it's going, it's going, right? So. Uh, but it's actually the inflationary. But you can see here the energy is really pulling back quite hard. And that's what's happening. We're starting to see a lot of things pull back. A lot of things are pulling back, which is going to cause the inflationary to, to come down. Um, and you can see pretty much pretty much also pretty much a pretty much a flat market across the market there. Let me go back to these markets through here. Go back to the NASDAQ. Uh, as you can see, pretty much pretty much a nothing day today. Um, we are actually sort of holding through this level you can see really if i draw like a bit of a box right let me let me box this up for you let me ship it where should i ship where should i ship it guys put your put your put your uh put your address in below actually don't, actually don't 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 do that <laughs> people will send you some stuff i tell you it's probably not what you want to get um so all right i'm gonna all right so anyway so we're gonna have this downward moving through here but we're actually sort of we sort of haven't really been going anywhere the last couple of months, right? Yes, we're in a bit of a slight downward trend or in a downward trend, but we're not really going anywhere, right? When you see we from the, from the start of May, this whole sell in May go away, it seems like it's working, right? Look at this here, I was selling May and go away because we're just, we really haven't done much when it comes to the whole start of May, really, right? Yeah, we had a bit of a downward leg and so on and so forth, but not really much going on through there. Same for the Dow Jones as well too, pretty much, pretty much still in this downward leg, as you can see. So we're still in this very strong downward leg. We had that bit of a reversal bar yesterday. Um, but again, we're still really, really not much going on. But I'm telling you right now, traders, we need to be prepared. We need to be prepared. Why? Because this whole period we're going through right now is, is actually the quiet period. You think today, you think the market's volatile now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wait till you actually see the end of this year, because I think that 
And we're going to see some crazy, crazy, crazy volatility in the markets through there. Pretty much enough today across gold as well too. As you can see, gold and also silver. The big thing about those charts there, traders, that I really want to uh, sort of bring to your attention again is the big picture here. What do we have? We have a high, a lower high, a low. We're breaking past this major level of support is now becoming resistance and we're rolling over. So right now, there is a real high probability we're gonna continue down through here. The trend is your friend until the end. Well, John, the market's gonna bottom because, because of, because, 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 what? That because, if it's not because what the market is telling you, right, the trend, oh, the market's, it's, but it's a, it's a double bottom, John. It's gonna definitely go up. All right, confirmation bias. My, one of my biggest mistakes, traders, one of my biggest mistakes in the markets was, was looking for confirmation bias. Don't do it. If you if you have one way in the markets, but then you're going to completely ignore all the other ways, confirmation bias, well, of course, you're going to look for, every, you know, oh, I'm not going to watch that video. He's talking about the market crashing. Why would I watch, why would I watch the market, why would I watch a video about the market crashing when I've got, when I'm 100% long right now? I'm going to go watch videos about the market rallying because I want to, I want to make, I want to look, I want to get everything I can to have that confirmation bias about how I'm right. Wrong. Um, so let's go have a look at the metals as well too. Uh, but the, the, the interesting thing about the metals is that, yeah, we're actually breaking below the support level here, but uh, I don't... Even though this is happening, traders, yes, and we're in a downward trend and so on and so forth, right? I don't believe that... I actually believe this is going to be some sort of a fake out. That's what I believe. We'll have to wait and see, right? Now, fake out, what I mean is, you see we actually we're broken below this support level through here? We're broken below there? Because we've been coming down for so long, and this is actually a really interesting point, because we, we may get a little bit more downside, but I believe we're probably going to get something like that soon. Now, uh, again, we have to wait and see it happen, but... The reason why I'm saying that is because we've been going down, 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 and now we're breaking it. So this is probably going to be some sort of a fake out. It's a, I believe it's going to be a fake out. And what I mean by that, once again, is that see how we're actually closing below this major support level here? I believe we, we, we may even get something like that. And then we get something like that. And then we start to see a bit of reversal. A reversal, not a complete change of trend, right? This is a reversal or a pullback right? We have to wait and see. If we do get something like this and then it starts to morph into something like this and we start to get a nice little higher low and, you know, we start to get a nice little trend in place because we want that higher low, something like that, then yes, we can start to see things starting to change. But for now, reading this market, it's probably going to be a faker. Um, it doesn't mean it's going to be the, the, the it, it could be, but it doesn't mean it's going to be the ultimate low for the year. Now, my my longer term trades, my longer term positions this for this decade are metals and miners. We are gonna go through, especially the second half of this year, traders, get ready for one of the craziest bull markets you've ever seen. You think Bitcoin was big, ha ha ha. You wait, you wait to see the metals and miners take off. But, for, but, but between now and then, there's a lot of time, right? It's probably a thousand, it's probably a thousand plus days from now through to the second half of this year. How many days is that? Put, leave a comment below, guys. Leave, leave, a comment, leave a comment below and let me know how many days is that until the second half of this year. Um, and then also, leave a comment below. What is your favorite mining stock? Do you have a favorite mining stock? Leave a comment below. I'd like to see what you think because I'm actually looking at some mining stocks myself right now to add to my longer term portfolio. Um, and uh, I'm interested to see what you guys think about that. So that's what I'm looking at through there. Um, the big thing, I, I want to share this with you. Look, check this out here, right? Check this out here. Here is a, a image that I got from this. I was, I was watching uh, Mike Maloney's episode, right? Watching Mike Maloney's episode uh, probably a week ago now, maybe a week ago. Um, and he was um, he was he was ba basically talking about this how at, the, at the, um, an end of 40 years of disinflationary great moder uh, moderation. Um, would have seriously consequences for investors, right? So now we're now they're pointing out this bit through here. But I want to, again, guys, let's not look at what's happening right now. Look at where we are going, okay? Look, remember, if you want to invest, now trading is a completely different, you know, different scenario. If you're a trader of the market, you're active. You're looking for a pattern. You're losing stop losses. You're getting in, you're getting out. That's a trading mentality. Do not be investing in the markets and then have a trading mentality. You are, you are all over the place. Right? If I had a if, if I had a wet fish, I'd definitely smack you over there and say, listen, what are you doing? Investing is I'm going to buy this because it's a buy and hold. Just because it goes down 10% doesn't mean 
doesn't mean I, I, I don't believe in that that's that, that situation, right? I'm going to continue to hold that. That's a that's an investing scenario. I don't have a stop loss in that scenario. It's just buy and hold, right? So um, I hope you understand that. So, but look at this here. Remember, we got to go back to previous times of when this was happening. And the good thing about this chart, thank you, Mike Maloney, and I forget the other guy's name who was actually doing this episode. So thank you, guys. Um, by the way, go, make sure you go watch his Hidden Secrets of Money if you haven't done so yet. Yeah, Mike Maloney, I guarantee you're going to absolutely love it. So this point right here, this is exactly like the 70s. Why? Start of... Look at this here. The start of the 70s, we had addition, we had a deflationary, a deflationary period. Start of the 20s, we had a deflationary period. Then we had a rise up into roughly the middle of um, we had a rise up into in the roughly middle of the 70s. We've had a rise roughly right now. It's probably not there because this actually started a bit later, as you can see. So this actually started a bit earlier, so it's probably gonna end a bit earlier. But then, you, as you can see, we actually then what? We had a pullback caused by what? The green, the gray bars are the recession. And then because we went, we went through a deflationary period, we went through a recession, guess what they did through here? You name it, they did a whole bunch of QE, put up, pump up the market and the way, and, and then they did the exact same thing as they did back here in COVID, which they're going to do the exact same thing again, expecting a different result. The best thing about what I've just said there, traders, is that if they did the exact, if they did the exact same thing, they're going, the exact same thing is gonna happen. Do you, have, do you guys understand what I just said there? If they do the exact same thing, the exact same thing is going to happen, right? What do I mean by that? Right now, firstly, we've, we've, got, we've got to move up through here. We're probably going to see the inflation, well, like we, the inflation may be even up here a little bit here, right? We're probably going to see the inflation come back down to here. I don't believe we're going to get back down towards this 2% level. What we may get back down to maybe four, you know? As you can see here, right? We went up to 12 and then we went, we went back down to four. So we, we may even go back down to maybe... Yeah, maybe down four or something. Actually, that looks like around a five through there, right? So that was a five. Boom, bust, boom. Boom, bust, recession period. Boom, bust, recession period coming. What's gonna happen? Then then we're gonna get here. We're not gonna go as low as we did here because look at this, last time went low and then we made a higher low. We're not gonna we're not gonna go as low as we did last time. So we're gonna make another high low. They're gonna do what? What, what are they gonna do here that's going to cause? So. I, you see this happening, right? This is going to happen again towards the end of this year. What is, that's, that's the result. What's going to cause that to happen? What's going to cause that to happen? Now, if that's inflationary, again, what did they do last time that caused the inflation? Oh, they did QE. Ah, oh, they, they dropped the interest rates, da, 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 right? All that sort of stuff. Okay, so let's actually do this here. If we are emotionally intelligent, and the market does, and the market starts to go. We go through the recession, which we are going to go through the recession, and they're going to do another QE. And if you see them doing another QE, and they start to drop, drop, drop the interest rates, what do you think is going to happen to the markets? The same thing, right? Preparation meets opportunities, guys. When, for those who are just so stuck in them in the moment of right now, you are completely missing the big picture here. Yes, you may have to be patient. Oh, John, but I want to make my million dollars today. You missed that on Bitcoin last year. Come on. Actually, even if you did, even if you did get on Bitcoin, you're probably still holding, hoping it's going to go to that, that million dollar mark that everyone keeps, every barge ass out there keep, keeps talking about. Anyway, so everyone, right? Everyone, oh, Bitcoin's going to be great. Bitcoin's going to be great. Bitcoin's going to be in a great inflationary head. I think I was the only person out there on YouTube saying, don't touch Bitcoin, don't touch it, run away from it, buy gold. <laughs> And people listen to me. You won't be up a lot, but you won't be down seventy percent, like the crypto market. Anyway, oh geez, I just lost a lot of. <laughs> it's like dislike, dislike, dislike in the video, right? So we can see what's happening through here. So get ready for that. But as you can see, this is just a repeat of what's likely to happen. Similar things happen under similar circumstances, right? We had the deflationary period, then the boom, then the bust, then the boom, leading us into the rest of this year. We're going to get a boom. We're going to get a bust. But we're, as you can see here, this actually happened, this actually looks like that's 19, say 1970 through to 1975. So it looks like maybe we had that deflationary period. Um, and as you can see, even at the start of the 1970s, we had a recession. And then we had another recession here in the middle. And then we had another recession here. So that's probably what's going to happen, right? We had a recession here. Then in the middle, we're going to get another recession over here. And then at the end, we're going to get another recession over here. So the next recession is not going to be the really big one, the great reset. No, 
No, no. The next one, yes, we're going to get, we're going to get the deflation. We're going to get a recession. We're going to get booms. We're going to get, we're going to get a bust. It's all going to happen and get ready for it. Why? Because when they start to come out and they drop the interest rates and they do the QE, guess what's coming, guys? It's actually not that, you know, back when they did the whole, when, when the whole COVID stuff happened and then I saw them drop and they saw them do the QE. What do you think I did, guys? I went heavy, heavy into the markets. Why? Because I could see what was happening was going to happen in the markets, and some of my, those, um, you know, one of my positions, which was actually my best trade out of that out of that portfolio of, of positions that I got into, it was an options trade, and uh, I had twelve months of expiration of that option trade, and within six months, it was Apple. Within six months, I made like almost three hundred percent return on that trade. It was just phenomenal, right? So similar things are going to happen. So those who are prepared, those who are actually watching what's happening right now, are going to be re really, 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 really rewarded of what's going on in that there. And so we can see that moving through here. And again, guys, when we're looking at, and that's the reason why like, I talk about I talk about inflation a lot, um, about what's going on. And if I bring this over here, that's why when you look at, say, things like oil, right? I talked about oil. Uh, we, I talked about the energy sector today as well. And I talked about oil. And I said, we're probably going to start to see a bit of rejection at where? Oh, the lines didn't save. Why not? Why didn't the lines save? It doesn't like me today. All right. So I said, you know, there was actually a line there. Anyway, so we had this line through here. Look at that there. So I said, we're probably going to get a rejection through there. And then we're probably going to start to see, um, probably going to start to see something going on. So probably, probably at least a move back down towards these low level through, through here somewhere, right? So some, somewhere through there. And so as you can see, this is what's actually going on right now. We're actually rejecting this whole head and shoulder formation is rejecting right now on this oil, as you can see. So we may get a little bit more upside out of oil, but I don't see it, right? We're probably going to start to see this here. But you know what's going to happen? The oil, the, 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 the prices of the pump are not going to change. We're going, we're, we're going to, we're start, we've already started a deflationary period in the markets and you're seeing that you're seeing that already when it comes to you know when it comes to the markets i've also talked about many times guys how i believe the interest rates are going to start to come back down and look what's happening now okay we're starting to really hit a bit of a a bit of a headway and the big thing about why i believe the interest rates are going to come back down is because it's common sense of how everything works everything right when the market, when we have a big vertical move, I don't care what it is, right? It could be you and your missus, right? At, at night, well, you know what I'm talking about, right? So, you eventually what? You, you're gonna, you're gonna have the high, and then you want to go to sleep, and then she wants to cuddle, and you're like, "Come on, darling, leave me alone." <laughs> She's like, "What's wrong? Why didn't you love me anymore?" <laughs> So, so we're probably gonna get, we've got a big move. We're probably, and this last little, that's lit. This last little push, we had a pullback in the last little push, is probably going to be the high of the interest rates now before we start to see the pullback. So the interest rates are going to start to come back down. Now, the big interesting thing about this trade is remember, we always talk of, we there's always talk of the of the inverted U curve, right? You know, oh, it's inverted U curve, inverted U curve, it's all oh, the inverted U curves. Right, let me show you this here. So let me show you this this uh this uh this chart here, right? We're always talking about the inverted yield curve, but the thing is, you must you must and try when you understand when you understand this, you can see this coming a mile away, right? Interest rates are really high, long term interest rates, right? We've got the whole thirty year and ten year, they're high, they're probably going to start to pull back. But what is the Fed doing right now? We hope the Fed is doing what? The Fed is actually starting to raise the interest rate, right? So as this is the ten year and this is the thirty year, as they start to do this. Pull back and pull back. Guess what the Fed's going to continue to do? Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. And then guess what? And then, and it may not, it might not be exactly like that. But then guess what? The Fed's fund rate, which is this rate over here, is going to be much higher than these over here because as they're pulling back, you just see coming a mile away, right? Now, why would they be pulling back? Probably because they can see inflationary not inflation not being a problem, but the Fed's going to continue to raise interest rates like they do. They're slow to react, um, you know, and then they continue to stay on the path they are. And then because this is going to be much higher, we're probably going to get a curve that looks something like this. You know, again, it's not going to be exactly like that, guys. Oh, John, we're not going to get the three percent. It's it's just it's image, right? We could get to, we could get the two and a half and, and something like that. But the higher this high end is going to be up there. The the long term interest rates, what I just said there, they're, gonna, they're probably going to start to come back down through to here, um, and that's going to cause the inverted yield curve. Then that's 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 the inverted yield curve, right? Because look at every recession. Let's actually go back to this point through here. 
All right, I'm going to bring this point over here just before just before the 08 period. There we go through here. There we go. Let me just bring this up through to here. Just trying to see. There we go. See? See the exact same thing? So this was, what was this? This was 06. Inverted yield curve in 06. See how, see how the, the short end, the longer end, 10-year, 30-year, 10-year, 20-year, 30-year is here. The Fed actually rose it to there. Guess what? Now we've actually got a big problem, right? So, but notice it was 2006. When did the market, that was towards the end of 2006. So we, when did the market top out? 2007 was that major top. 2008 was what? The bear market. So I want you to really keep the, keep an eye on that traders because we are going through that. And this is the same for the 10 year as well too, guys. Look, if we just go through here, all right, look at this here. We've had a very big move up. We've had a pullback. We've had a last little push up through there. Um, I don't believe we're, we're going to continue to go through here. I believe we're going to start to see a pullback, but I don't believe we're going to pull back to where we were before. And what I mean by that is this. I'm looking at the, what's this here, the 10 year? Let's, let's, let's actually look at the 30 year, okay? What we're seeing through here is this is what's probably going to happen to interest rates, okay? So when we're looking at the interest rates, we're probably going to see a pullback through here, and we may even get a pullback down to here somewhere, right, overall. And then what's going to happen, and then we're going to start, then we're going to go through, and then we're, going to go, then we're probably going to go through a big massive boom to start to see this sort of happening here. And over here on this side, guess what? Savers are not going to be losers. Savers are going to be like, oh my goodness, I'm now getting 5% interest rate again. How good is this, right? So savers will be winners once again. And um, but then, at, and this is where on the other side, uh, after all this goes down, um, that's when that's when asset prices are going to be hurt, uh, hurt uh, or hurt overall. Uh, but the but the inflationary period we're going to be in is going to be definitely with the mining and metals. That's why they're probably going to go through a boom. But as I said before, traders, that looking at looking at the overall sector through here, or looking at let me just remove that. Looking at this thing through here, um, the, the the whole big recession that's coming, that's not the next one, right? The next one is not going to be the massive big recession. It is going to be a recession. It is going to be ugly, but it's not the big great reset. The great reset comes towards the end of this year, just like we did back in the seventies, right? How we went through a, how we went through a bust. They're going to do another. We've got one more round of massive QE coming, just like just like they did back here. We're going to get a pullback in the. We're going to get a pullback in this in the inflationary curve through here. We're going to go to recession. They're going to drop the interest rates. They're going to do a QE and they're going to boom it through here. This is going to be over twenty. This is going to be twenty twenty eight to twenty thirty somewhere through there, right? It may be even a bit earlier. It, um, it may be twenty thirty. It may be twenty twenty eight. Somewhere around that period. And then yes, then that's when the whole great reset's going to happen. We're probably going to see a lot more, a lot more of the digital dollar uh, come in, and so on and so forth. But you know what's going to happen from now through to then? The metals and miners are going to absolutely just go crazy. So there we go, traders. Hope you enjoy. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next video.